Infiltration is the rate at which water enters the soil. In comparison to saturated hydraulic conductivity, infiltration is affected by properties of the immediate surface, including crust, biopores, and cracks. The double ring infiltrometer is a tool used to measure the infiltration rate. The measurement is strongly affected by soil use and may change through the year. Infiltration is measured under conditions where free water is on the ground surface. After several hours, the soil profile becomes saturated to a depth of about three feet and the rate becomes fairly constant. This is referred to as the steady ponded infiltration rate. Knowledge of infiltration is extremely important because it uh, determines uh, how much of the water that falls on the soil, how much of the precipitation actually gets in to the soil where it can be used. Uh, it's important for uh, uh, irrigation as it is for uh, dryland agriculture. And uh, the, the various uh, models that have been developed for prediction of erosion for our agency all have estimates of uh, infiltration because it's the water that doesn't infiltrate, it's the water then that runs off from the soil that determines the, uh, or is very important in determining the amount of erosion. And, and the method we have here is the classical uh, approach that has been used for 75 years for measuring uh, this uh, so-called steady ponded infiltration rate. There's uh, an aspect of the uh, setup here that's very important, and that is how deep the, uh, you insert the rings in the soil. I think you can visualize that in order to measure the infiltration rate, you need to have the rings down in the uh, layer of the soil that limits the infiltration rate. And in this soil, that will be uh, what we call the uh, plow layer. And we'll want to insert these uh, rings the order of uh, four to six inches into the soil. I want to talk to you uh, just a moment about the water source for the outer ring. You have uh, water in this uh, barrel, and in it you have a, a garden hose, which is hooked to a, uh, a float device. And this float device then will be mounted on the outer ring. And uh, we will then be able to keep the water level in the uh, outer ring at the uh, uh, at the level that we desire. And the water, uh, I should mention, feeds by gravity from the uh, water source here over to the uh, outer ring. Here we insert the float on the outer, uh, outer ring, thusly, and uh, now we're in position and ready to go. Now we're going to fill the uh, inner ring with water, bringing it up to approximately the same level as in the outer ring. And just to recapitulate, the, the water in the outer ring is uh, being controlled by this uh, float valve that we talked about. And you see we've put uh, an energy breaker there of uh, straw uh, because we don't want uh, water impacting directly on the, on the soil because it will cause dispersion perhaps. So we just pour this in. And I just checked very quickly the, the height of the water in there. And that's, uh, make sure that that's about the, the same as the level in the uh, outer ring and which it is. So now we're ready to uh, attach the device for measuring now the rate at which the water moves into the soil from the inner ring, buffered as you can see by the uh, envelope of water 
in the outer ring, which uh, reduces and prevents lateral water flow. We want to uh, talk to you now about uh, measuring the rate of water movement out of the inner ring. And, and that is really what we're uh, after here. You recall we have a, a float device that we use for metering the water into the uh, outer ring. But that is uh, uh, really too crude an approach. And uh, what we're going to be using here is a uh, compact uh, constant head permeometer. And here we have the uh, water source from the permeometer. It's placed in the uh, inner ring, as you see. And uh, the bubbles now that you uh, will see periodically uh, in, the, uh, in this device then uh, mark the movement of water from the device to the inner ring to uh, replace water that has moved uh, out of the uh, inner ring into the soil. So with this device, we can keep the water level constant in the uh, uh, inner ring. And we're then getting a measure of how fast the water moves into the soil from the, uh, from the inner ring. For a description of how to properly set up the compact constant head permeometer, please refer to the demonstration of the use of that instrument or to the instruction manual. Now we want to initiate the measurement of the uh, rate at which the water is moving out of the uh, inner ring. And we do that by uh, finding an even uh, minute uh, time here and marking this tape, as you see here. And then uh, <clears throat> we will come back and after a, a known time interval, we'll mark it again and we'll know the height of the or the distance between the two marks and we'll know that we know the diameter of the tube and so we know how much water has moved uh, from the uh, inner tube into the soil in a given time. And now here we have almost uh, three minutes elapsed and when it has we're going to mark this and as you see here and uh, we now have uh, right three minutes on there so I won't forget we now have uh, the height of the column of water and the cross-sectional area and we can get the volume of water that's moved into the soil in three minutes and I think uh, you could uh, see from this that uh, if you know the diameter of this tube and you know the diameter of the uh, <coughs> inner ring that we then can calculate the uh, infiltration rate, the inches per hour of uh, water that has moved into the soil from the inner ring.